It's possible to key track various phase plant parameters in a musical way. That's to say, you can modulate frequency-based parameters to stay relative in semitones to the note being played. The bit crush, delay, 3-band EQ and slice EQ are all special cases, and I'll deal with them later in the video. But the most straightforward are the pitch setting on the resonator, the frequency setting on the disperser and ring mod, and the cutoff on the generator, effect, comb, ladder, and nonlinear filters, as well as on the phaser. All of these work in the same way. Create a note modulator. Modulate the parameter with the output at 100%. Now the distance in semitones from the applied setting to the note being played will always be the same as the distance in semitones from the stated setting to the note modulator's center. If you set it to a frequency, say, 8 semitones above the note modulator's center, it will always move to a setting 8 semitones above whatever note is being played. The note modulator value is calculated after glide and the pitch wheel have been applied to the MIDI note, but the master pitch and the harmonic, frequency, and semi-sense settings on the generator are ignored. It's easiest to understand with an example. I have a Reese bass patch. It's two sawtooth analogs that are slightly detuned from one another, running through an ensemble. The beating that the detuning causes is the essence of the Reese's sound, but I want the fundamental to stay solid without suffering from phasing. I'm going to use this filter to cut out the fundamental of my detuned source. I create a note modulator and make sure the note modulator center is set to A4. I can now look up the frequency of A4 on this website, which is linked in the description, or just do it by ear. A4 is 440 hertz, meaning that its first harmonic above the fundamental is 880 hertz. So I'm going to set my filter to a steep high pass, set the cutoff between the first two harmonics at about 600 hertz, and modulate it with the note modulator at positive 100%. Now, when I play a G2, the fundamental frequency of which is 98 hertz, the high pass is set to about 150 hertz, in between the first two harmonics, and continues to cut just the fundamental, no matter what note I play. I can now include a sine wave generator, route it to a different lane, and I have an undistorted mono fundamental sub for my Reese. Again, this works exactly the same way with the pitch setting on the resonator, the frequency setting on the disperser and ring mod, and the cutoff on the generator, effect, ladder, comb, and nonlinear filters, as well as on the phaser. On the three band and slice EQs, the same principles apply, but the modulation settings are slightly different. On the slice EQ, instead of modulating from the note at 100%, simply modulate at 50% and it will key track in the same way as any of the filters already mentioned. The three band has two splits, both of which must be modulated at 200%. So you need to run your note modulator through a multiply unit first. Modulate input A with the note at a value of 2.0, then set input B to 1.0. You can now modulate the splits of the three band EQ with the output of the multiply at 100%. There are two more snap-ins which you may wish to musically track the bit crusher and the delay. Unfortunately, neither of these respond linearly nor even quadratically to the note modulator. That's to say, you can't simply plug the note modulator into them at some percentage and have them track. You can, however, achieve imperfect results using remap LFOs. I'm not gonna describe how this works since I already have a tutorial on them linked in the description, but with this slightly humped ramp in the case of the bit crusher, or this slightly dipped ramp in the case of the delay, you can stay roughly in tune over the course of an octave or two. If you require more accuracy than that, I suggest you watch the link tutorial and use the step tool to create precise response curves through trial and error. Good luck.